Hey guys, so when you look up into the night sky and admire the stars, you might forget that the International Space Station is orbiting the Earth 260 miles high and completes its orbit in just 92 minutes. It's also the third brightest object in the night sky. So in this video, we're going to talk about how astronauts actually live there and what they do in space, what hardships they face in their daily lives, what problems they have to solve, what fate awaits the ISS someday, and what will ultimately replace it. So the decision to create the ISS was signed on January 29, 1998 in DC by representatives from Canada, the European Space Agency, Japan, Russia, and the US. So construction began that same year. Two years later, the first crew arrived at the station, led by Commander William Shepard, alongside pilot Yuri Gidzenko and mechanical engineer Sergei Krikalev. The station has been permanently inhabited ever since. Back then, the ISS was made up of three modules and each was crowned by a small room. Today, it's a huge space laboratory the size of a soccer field. It is 239 feet long, 356 feet wide, and 65.6 feet tall. And this monstrosity weighs 420 tons. So American astronauts joke that working on the ISS is kind of like working at a massive space car service center. All the systems need filters replaced and regular testing. The second type of work they do is loading and unloading. Several containers of food, water, and experiment equipment arrive on cargo rockets. Unloading these cargo rockets turns into a long and arduous task. All the boxes and packages need to be carried and fastened individually. You can't simply toss food into the engineering wing and let it float around in low gravity. You'd never be able to find anything. So one of the major rules of thumb is that everything should be in its place. Space will make you become more organized. The third way they work is by carrying out a multitude of scientific experiments and research. For example, they recently did experiments studying if mushrooms are capable of digesting radioactive emissions and turning it into something energetically useful. The mushrooms were gathered in the destroyed Chernobyl reactor in Ukraine. It's worth remembering that sometimes astronauts have to go into open space to do repairs or install new equipment, which does carry serious risks. There have been 236 spacewalks in the ISS's history, and that number, of course, is only growing. So mornings on the ISS aren't always great. Besides always waking up to an alarm like millions of other Earthbound people do, you might wake up with a headache from oxygen. You might wake up with a headache from oxygen deprivation. Now, despite the constant ventilation on board, air on the ISS moves slower and doesn't create strong air currents. So that results in CO2 exhaled by the astronauts staying near their faces. And they'll often complain about a lack of sleep, nightmares, or just bad dreams even though they sleep a pretty good eight and a half hours a day. And falling asleep in orbit, and falling asleep in orbit also is no easy task. Sleeping in the sleeping bag attached to the wall without the help of gravity is a challenge. Safety lights are never completely turned off, and if you wake up thirsty or needing to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, it's much simpler to just wait until the morning than to float around like a half-asleep space ghost through the ISS's corridors. So the astronauts put on clean underwear once every three days. There are no washing machines in space, so underwear and undershirts are taken in the required amount. Shorts are changed once a month and shirts once a week. After use, the single-use clothes are taken to the Russian cargo rocket Progress, where they burn up in the thicker layers of the atmosphere. Hygiene hasn't changed, so everyone washes their faces, shaves, brushes their teeth, and even washes their hair with a special substance once developed for hospital patients who couldn't take showers. Of course, washing and brushing your hair in zero-G looks quite amusing. Washing yourself with wet wipes and similar tasks aren't very convenient. However, it is necessary in such a cramped space with three to eight people at the same time. So the bathrooms are designed for men and women and look the same as they do on Earth, but they do have some quirks to them. 
so the toilets have foot harnesses and powerful vacuum pumps inside. An astronaut straps in with a special spring-loaded belt onto the toilet, then turns on the powerful fan and opens the vacuum hole thing where all the waste goes. So the ISS recently had a series of unpleasant events. First, an air leak was detected on the station that needed to be found and fixed. So the ISS crew moved into the Russian Zvezda module since the team thought the source was in the American section. However, the crew actually found that the leak was in the Svedza module. They tried unsuccessfully to solve it several times, but finally, Russian cosmonaut Anatoly Ivenshin was able to fix the problem, get this, with a simple tea pack and some scotch tape. And right after that, one system after another was malfunctioning in the Russian segment. First, the oxygen reclamation system stopped working that had already broken several times. Then the bathroom broke, so the cosmonauts had to use the American bathroom. Of course, the American section has similar problems, but we thought of the old joke about Yuri Gagarin, the first man to go to space in 1961, who had to use, get this, newspaper as toilet paper since the Soviet Union only started sending it up seven years after he had already landed. The vacuum and food heating systems broke next, so let's hope they have enough scotch tape to fix all those problems. So exercise is extremely important for the astronauts, too. After muscle atrophy from being on the ISS for 180 days, with the astronauts losing about 40% of their muscle mass, it was decided that constant physical activity would help solve this problem. So the ISS astronauts actually exercise about two to three hours a day. That way they are at least able to walk just a few hours after returning to ground. Astronauts also lose about 1.5% of their bone tissue due to disruption of restorative processes per month in orbit. The lower vertebrae, pelvis, and femurs are damaged more, and bones become more fragile. There are cycling machines and treadmills on the ISS to combat this atrophy. No word if it's a peloton or not, but the astronauts are attached to them with reinforced cables. So the best way to avoid potential illness and fatigue is regular precautions. And just because the ISS is home to the best prepared people doesn't mean they can't get sick. Eating in space is pretty difficult. It's a lot of space food in tubes that consists of the astronauts' diets. They have three types of food. Bags of prepared wet food that just needs to be heated up. Dehydrated food that has boiling water poured on it and dry goods that are hermetically sealed. Now, fresh fruits and vegetables are the hardest to find. Sometimes a small amount is sent up, but it's too expensive and inefficient, even though it's delicious. So astronauts grow plants in low gravity, but we aren't anywhere near low wide scale harvests. Nevertheless, fresh vegetables grown in low gravity are officially on the ISS menu. So a work week on the ISS lasts five and a half days, and the rest of the time is considered time off. But days off don't mean that you don't work. It's just that there's no scheduled experiments or quote-unquote serious tasks. In your free time, you can call your relatives. There's a secure channel between the Earth and the ISS, and you can always bring your laptop and write your family emails, upload pictures of the station to social media, or just read the news. So the ISS is expected to function until 2024, when it will probably be sunk into the Pacific Ocean since the overall maintenance of the entire station costs all the participants, get this, about $7 billion per year, and its time has come. So in the same year, a new international station called Gateway is planned to be launched. The current idea for this project is a multi-module station that will orbit the moon. SpaceX expectedly got the Gateway Logistics Services contract for equipping Gateway. Elon Musk will develop a new Dragon XL cargo rocket based on the current Cargo Dragon used to deliver goods to the ISS. Now, according to NASA's requirements, it will be able to deliver up to five tons of cargo per launch to the station. Now, this new station won't just replace the ISS. 
it will elevate the level of space research and humanity to a new level. It's planned to use it as a base for moon landings and to transfer astronauts going to Mars and back. Only participation from the Russian Federation isn't expected this time. It's likely that NASA calculated delivering oxygen to the patched up Russian module in near lunar orbit as too expensive. But more seriously, Russians have long since lost the USSR's space heritage and are starting to step away from this scientific branch. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to leave us a like if you learned something new and let me know, would you actually be willing to live on the ISS? I don't think I could do it. And we'll see you again next time.